Okay, the skeleton of the head is called skull, contains two parts. This is calvaria, otherwise called brain box. You are not going in detail about calvaria. And this is facial skeleton. Calvaria contains 14 bones and facial skeleton contains 14 bones. Totally we have 28 bones in skull. So studying the front view of the skull is norma frontalis. Lateral view is norma lateralis. Studying the posterior view is norma occipitalis. And studying the base of the skull is norma basalis. So for convenience of study, norma basalis is divided into three parts, anterior, middle and posterior. So the anterior part contains only the alveolar arches and the hot palate. Middle part, so here we draw an imaginary line at the anterior border of the foramen magna and this line divides into middle part and the posterior part. Let's move on to the anterior part of norma basalis. So the alveolar arch bears the upper teeth. Just behind the socket for incisor teeth, we have incisive fossa and incisive canals pierces the incisive fossa. Hot palate contains cruciform suture. Those are intermaxillary, interpalatine and palatomaxillary sutures and posterior laterally you can see a big foramen called greater palatine foramen just behind that is your lesser palatine foramen so nothing much in the anterior part of norma basalis and that is your free border of the hot palate that's posterior nasal spine so just in front of your free border you can see marking called palatine crest So what passes through the incisive canal? Nasopalatine vessels passes from the nose to the hot palate and greater palatine passes from the hot palate to the nose. You can see this greater palatine foramen. It allows the greater palatine vessels to reach the incisive fossa. Similarly, lesser palatine foramen transmits lesser palatine nerves. Moving on to the middle part, let's divide into center part and the lateral part. So, what are the structures in the center part? That's the thin plate of bone called omer, which divides nasal cavity into two halves. Lower part is attached to hot palate, upper part that is body of spinoi. It becomes broader to fuse with the basic occiput of occipital bone. That junction there is a tubercle called pharyngeal tubercle which gives attachment to fibrous raphae for the superior constrictor muscle attachment. And coming to the lateral part we have pterygoid plates. That's the medial pterygoid plate. And laterally we have lateral pterygoid plate. So, you can see between the pterygoid plate and the maxilla there is a fissure called pterygomaxillary fissure which lodges pterygopalatine fossa. We have an important structure called pterygopalatine ganglion. We have few, few more structures in the pterygopalatine fossa and the vidian now it passes to reach the pterygopalatine fossa. So let's focus the medial pterygoid plate. See the upper part of the medial pterygoid plate splits to form scaphoid fossa. So that is scaphoid fossa. When you trace this medial pterygoid plate lower down, there is an extension called pterygoid hamulus. So this is lateral pterygoid plate which gives muscle attachment on its medial and lateral surface. That's the pterygoid fossa. 
at the anterior border fusion. So that scaphoid fossa just posterior lateral to the scaphoid fossa. See the side that is medial pterygoid plate upper part spreads to form scaphoid fossa just posterior and laterally there is oval shaped foramen called foramen ovale just behind the foramen ovale there is small round shaped foramen called foramen spinosum and still posterior lateral to that is the spine of spinoid bone that is the sulcus called sulcus tube between the spinoid and petrous temporal bone that sulcus tube lodges the cartilaginous part of auditory tube so the anterior end of auditory tube opens in the nasopharynx okay let's move on to petrous temporal bone this is petrous part of temporal bone seen from inside that is apex of the petrous temporal bone you can see the apex is related to a foramen on either side of body of spinoid that is foramen lazarum and behind the foramen lazarum you have carotid canal upper part of carotid canal in the inferior surface this one is lower part of carotid canal what is upper part and lower part just see here assume the thread as internal carotid artery so the internal carotid artery enters your lower part of carotid canal and it forms a siphon shaped course which emerges at your upper part of carotid canal so this upper part carotid canal leads to your foramen lazarum on either side of body of spinoid so this forms your lateral relation to your cavernous sinus okay now this internal carotid artery it further passes forwards so that's the course of internal carotid artery you can see it passes forwards and forms a lateral relation to the cavernous sinus so near the optic canal this internal carotid artery gives its first branch called ophthalmic branch that ophthalmic branch enters the optic canal which supplies the eyeball so this ophthalmic branch is seen in your orbit So what are the contents of optic canal you have optic nerve and ophthalmic artery okay i hope you understand the course of internal carotid artery so from its entry into the carotid canal till it reaches your orbit this is the course and relation of internal carotid artery okay so just lateral to the carotid canal is jugular fossa and jugular foramen you can see the jugular foramen communicates to the other side whereas this one it forms a hollow fossa which lodges the superior bulb of internal jugular vein so internal jugular vein passes through the jugular foramen along with 
1911 cranial nerves and just lateral that's the styloid process which is a long process of temporal bone here it's broken and that is your mastoid process behind external acoustic meatus between those two processes your stylomastoid foramen which transmits your facial nerve coming to the posterior part so this big foramen is called foramen magnum anterolaterally you have occipital condyles which are bean shaped and this articulates with your superior articulating facet of fatlus just anterior to the occipital condyle is anterior condylar foramen or hypoglossal foramen and posterior is posterior condylar foramen here posterior condylar foramen is absent that is occasionally present if present it transmits emissary vein and your hypoglossal foramen transmit hypoglossal nerve and this lateral part is your squamous part of occipital bone so just trace uh, just from behind the foramen magnum that's your neural crest and external occipital protuberance these are superior nuchal lines so uh, these are inferior nuchal lines okay that's it these are the parts of noma basalis so structure passing and few the attachments we can see it in next video thank you